I do think everyone is a gamer. I think um, uh, it's an important element of play and it serves a lot of societal functions beyond the obvious entertainment ones. My school of thought in terms of gaming and play uh, is that play is essential for human beings to learn and to grow. And it's a form of social engagement, it's a form of communication, and so gaming itself is part and parcel of that. We are, you know, we are not the only animals who play. Uh, monkeys play, even dogs can play kind of games. So I think there is something which makes that we probably need this to, you know, some develop our brain in some direction. But you know, the fact that well, maybe we play more than many other animals, but we're not the only ones. So there is something, I think, in animal life which makes that we have to play, I don't know what. To play and to game is uh, something like, like one has to do. And children like to play hours for hours all day long. If you, if you look at children, how they can play and they are sinking in the world of playing. And uh, I think this will never be completely lost in our life even if we grow older. So the, desire to play from time to time is still there. I think people, mankind has always played, uh, but it very often was less structured and much more individual. If you go back many thousands of years, uh, people still made holes in Africa in the sand or in the earth and played with, uh, with stones uh, the Mancala games. Of course, games are a mirror of our time. Uh, if you look at the classical games like chess or drafts, checkers, go, then these are relatively slow games. They are old games, in the old times we are slower. Gaming has been through multiple evolutions. Um, it started, of course, with H.G. Wells and Little Wars, and basically the hobby origin is playing with toy soldiers. And as most role players know, D&D um, developed out of something called Chainmail, which was a set of miniatures rules initially. There were lots of games beforehand, but the modern hobby game industry really took off with Dungeons and Dragons. It sort of caught me up. I was a kid at the time. It made me feel like uh, I had something to contribute to the world in a lot of ways. It really felt like a, uh, a game that people could uh, certainly uh, immerse themselves in. So you had the kind of the, the blossoming of role-playing games in the 70s with Dungeons and Dragons and some other games like Traveler and the like, and then also the kind of the, the, the blossoming of uh, wargaming uh, with Avalon Hill and SPI. Then it, through the 80s and 90s, it slowly evolved uh, as a hobby and ebbed and flowed as different games and game systems became popular. However, things got really interesting when the hobby market really blew up in the early 2000s with games like Carcassonne and Settlers of Catan. And for everybody that got into that, we watched the board game industry grow exponentially. 
So the game developed in all the years and now we have a very big scenery of people who like games in all the world. Yeah, I mean, the numbers show that modern board gaming is gaining in popularity. I've seen conventions grow in size from year to year to year where they've outgrown their venues, where the first year is in like the back room of a community center, and the next year is the whole of the community center, and the next year is, you know, the grand ballroom of the biggest hotel in the city. So more and more designers are getting out there, more and more people are playing games. Tabletop gaming in terms of popularity has gone from a sensation that was for young people something that they played with their grandmothers and their parents and they said oh well, I gotta play another board game with my family and kind of rolled their eyes to a complete phenomenon. It started with games in the hobby market like Cards Against Humanity and then games like Exploding Kittens, things that made games more accessible. And from there, it has just blown up exponentially. We didn't see entire aisles of tabletop games in Barnes & Noble and Target and Walmart until the last couple years. So yes, this year is better than last year, which was better than the year before. But not only that, board games feel almost like technology to some degree because designers are constantly finding new and unique things to do in a board game and they'll find this new device and someone will say, wow, that's a breakthrough in this game. I actually think we live uh, in a very good, uh, good times uh, before, because if there are so many people can spend their time doing uh, uh, this stuff that is just for uh, fun and just for um, uh, um, strengthen uh, bonds between people and uh, just some good things to do together with friends. That's great, yeah? It's great to think about whether board games are important because on the one hand they're supposed to be somewhat trivial. They're, they're fun, they're light, they're something you do to get away from life. And so that seems like it should be just another form of entertainment that just disappears into the background, but they don't seem to be. They seem to really be something that holds a section of our society together. They give us the opportunity to play with each other around a table. Then I can, I can work with that as a right. thing. So if you light a candle, you can take, well, yeah, how do the other ones get in? I think over the next couple of years, we'll definitely still see this, the industry expanding. I mean, you see so much growth in it right now. It's it's kind of mind-boggling and we're going to get a lot more and more games and then we're going to hit a point where it starts to constrain itself a little bit um, and I kind of I'm kind of excited for that because it means competition and your design really has to bring something new to the table and it has to do it really well and it has to be engaging um, which as a designer yeah it's going to mean it's going to be harder to get certain things published there's also going to be a ton more people out there but it's going to push me to make sure what what I'm putting out there is is top notch I can see two paths. I can see the path that it's currently on, where it continues to grow. Uh, we get more and more people interested. Uh, the overall revenues for the industry continue to grow and very healthy. A lot more people are getting uh, full-time jobs in the industry instead of having part-time jobs. A uh, lot more mainstream interest. Uh, basically, continuing that growth curve that we're on right now. Um, I hope that's the way it goes. Um, but I can also see some warning signs, I guess I'd say, of potential issues. Um, there are a lot of people that say there are too many games that are coming out. And if we don't have and continue to have a influx of new gamers, we may have sales that go way, way down from where they are now, which would lead to a little bit of a cratering in the industry. Gaming's going through a very interesting time right now. There's a lot of people making games and a lot of people buying games. Who knows if one of those is going to give, right? Like at some point, not we can't have this many people making games and at some point, we might not have this many people buying games. 
So we have to adapt. We are not always going to be able to make the same kinds of games we've made before. Um, there's some questions about how sustainable that is. There's simply too many games out there now for everybody to pay attention to them. And so we're now starting to talk about what kind of contraction might we see and how might that impact smaller publishers. People have said things like we're in the golden age of board gaming and it makes me think like so 20 years from now are people going to like still be playing these games or are there just going to be even more games that at that time that what we'll work on now will just be forgotten. I don't know. Like, Ultimately, like I'm just trying to live in the now and create something that will resonate with modern audiences. I think the, the market here in, in Central Europe and in, in Germany especially is very, very big and is uh, saturated in a way. Well, I'm not sure what the future of board gaming is going to be. I think all of us right now are just a little bit nervous. We're all watching the industry, see what's going on. In general, I think more and more people will be playing board games, but um, it is possible that um, there may not be as wide of a variety in the future. Uh, there's a couple things affecting that. One is there's just so many games out right now, and so uh, and there's been some failed Kickstarter campaigns too, and the typical consumer now is becoming a little bit more cautious about what they buy. They're, they're being very choosy, uh, you know, they're less willing to risk money on something unless they're sure that it's going to be a great game. So now it's all about the great game that's going to, you know, sell a bunch of copies. I don't think we've reached saturation point. The halls at the Messe are very large and there's still some capacity to grow. Uh, I see no reason why the market should shrink because I think as people discover games and they discover something that they can do interactively with other people uh, as opposed to with a computer screen, then I, I think there will always be a market and I think it's a market that's growing for a reason. I think there's still plenty of capacity for the market to go into. So I'm optimistic that this, this um, as a hobby, and the industry will continue to grow. I see no reason for it not to. It's not going to go away. Uh, you know, is it going to be, uh, uh, you know, solo? I mean, are we going to hit video game numbers or stuff like that? I don't think so. Um, but I, they're not going to go away. And, and I think more people uh, are still ready to discover board games. So I, I think we still have a ways to go. The future of board game is digital, integration of digital. Uh, one of my games that I worked on has gone digital and the amazing thing of that is the crossover is people who learn the game by downloading it on their mobile phones and playing it come back and buy the card game version and play it. It's happened with a lot of different games so I don't think that cardboard is ever going to die. People want to have a copy to sit with and hold but Games, tabletop games going into the digital realm has really just made the entire experience easier to learn, faster and more accessible for everybody. But I think the game will get more uh, digital, digital parts in it. So the combination between analog games and digital games would grow up in the future, I think. So, um, the game industry is gr growing very fast uh, uh, in, in, this, in the last years. Uh, I'm one who thinks that this doesn't stop in the next years, because I, I see that um, in, uh, only in the last years we have really many good games every year. And uh, when we have so many good games, the good games make that m many other Play, uh, game designers learn how to make games, so I think it will be will grow, and I think uh, everybody has a reason to be a board game fan when you have so many good games. The 
obviously the, in, the industry has been very extremely positive for the, for the past several years. Uh, whether it can continue that way, at that good, I don't know, but I don't think it's going to go away. It's basically an entertainment industry now, and, and people think of it as an entertainment industry. I can spend $20 and go to the movies, or I can spend $40 and have a game I play two or three different nights minimum. But there are many, many countries, not only in Europe but worldwide, where the board gaming, the playing of board games is a relatively new hobby. And South American countries come up with it, South Africa is doing it, and there are fans in India and Singapore and the Far East. And I'm really enjoying this because board gaming has really achieved true globalization at this point. I think the future of board gaming is bright, uh, whether we see a contraction or not. There's just so many people playing board gaming now, and um, unlike video gaming, tabletop gaming is contagious. I expect to see the demand for board games and the excitement about board games to continue for some time. We're in a good spot right now. We cannot believe that it is going to stay that way if we just do whatever it is we're doing now. Got to keep changing, keep innovating, keep doing the math, keep doing the science, keep doing the art, and maybe we'll be in a good spot.